It's been a while, but vlog numero nu, numero cuatro four. I haven't been on here in a while. Um, I've just been, I don't know, man, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with this this vlog. But I'm back on it, I'm excited to get it going. And I'm starting it with a new docu-series, Extraordinary Human. Um, I'm super excited about it. Um, and it kind of came about because I've, I'm always in direct access with some of the most extraordinary people that I've ever met. Like like traveling around as a professional track athlete and going to these meets, like I'm literally standing right next to some of the most accomplished athletes, like some of the big names, you know? And I feel like I have access to them in a way that a lot of people don't. And I want to be able to capture that and, and give that to you basically. Like all the meets that I've traveled to that I will be traveling to this year, hopefully at the Olympics, that will be amazing. If I can capture as many people as I can at the Olympics, that will be, dope that will be dope so i'm gonna use this docuseries to kind of like find amazing people extraordinary extraordinary people and have them tell me their story so i can capture them in their rawest form and basically get a, a illustration of who they are and how they become how they became who they are you know and i think that's something that can be powerful inspiring mot motivating inspiring inspiring powerful, motivating, and super encouraging. Even just for me, like the first um, first person that I, that I interviewed was Jared. He's one of my best friends. And like, I've learned things about him that I never knew. And it's been super dope to just dive into his mind, his deepest thoughts, his deepest motivations, and, and just find the golden pieces, golden nuggets in his mind that help motivate him to get up out of bed every day and chase his craziest dream, you know? So this is what the the overarching theme of Extraordinary Human is. I hope to be in contact with so many more like extraordinary people and to just do what I can to capture their story, their experience and present them to you. So that's the whole idea behind the docu-series. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy this first episode. I actually filmed this kind of like a year ago. So I've been sitting on it for a while. I just didn't know how to present it and, and put it in a, in a way that is is uh, accessible to you. So I kind of decided that this is what it's gonna be and this is how I'm gonna make it. So I hope you enjoy it. I put a lot of time, effort and energy in this and I really, really hope that it's something that, that you can take a lot from. So without further ado, this is um, Extraordinary Human, a docuseries part one with Jared Eden. I hope you enjoy it, I hope you like it. Let me know what you think and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, baby, yeah, baby, you feel me. All right, ciao. All right, here we go. All right, take seven. <laughs> Tell us about yourself. Who are you? Where are you from? And what do you do? My name is Jared Eaton. I am from Abington, Pennsylvania, which is right outside of Philadelphia. And I run the 60 meter and 110 meter hurdles for Team USA. <laughs> us but the dad was in the picture and I have a really close relationship with my father uh, I got three brothers so it was a really rough physical household um, you learn how to defend yourself <laughs> or get beat up all the time uh, and it was uh, really normal I grew up outside of Philadelphia which is in a small suburb outside so it wasn't really too rough or but it wasn't really you know a lot of handouts you have different adversities to deal with being um, in a suburb and not a, a lot of uh, people of color um, in the neighborhood, so just let you know. You can do this. You're the best. Go out and seize the day. <laughs> Thank you.
Excellent. My first interaction with track and field was the uh, Olympics in Atlanta, and I remember specifically watching Alan Johnson with my mom run uh, the hurdles. So it was really a special moment. That's kind of how I was aware of the Olympics and track and field, and then I officially joined my Olympic team, or not yet, but I officially joined my first track and field team in middle school uh, at seventh grade. So I, I look to them as my biggest inspiration and those are my role models. There's a redemptive power that making a choice has rather than feeling like you're at a effect all the things that are happening. Make a choice, like you just decide what it's gonna be, who you're gonna be, how you're gonna do it. Just decide, and then from that point, the universe is gonna get out your way. Let's talk about your motivations. Can you think back to something specific that happened in your life that lit a fire that motivated you to, to pursue your craziest dream? When you wake up in the morning, what is, what is something that, that gets you out of bed and gets you going to practice, ready to train as hard as you can every single day? As an athlete, what would you say is your biggest mental struggle right now? <sighs> Multiple things get me out of bed and are my biggest motivators. Having people not believe in me, I've had a lot of doors slam in my face. I've had a lot of people tell me that, you know, I can't do things or I can't run as fast or I'll never be able to finish a 110 race or, you know, I'll never, I shouldn't be running the 110s in the first place. 60 hurdles is all that I can aspire to be and you're kind of a second place kind of run of the mill guy. Being denied 
helps motivate me. So you tell me I can't do something and I think that's really common throughout a lot of people because you gotta be kind of a little crazy to kind of believe in yourself so much and to feel the energy and the power that you have within yourself to defy beats. tens of people or defy the odds that stack up against you but you know that you you know you got a lot in, inside of you and so being an older hurdler um, and still you know, I'm still finding or searching for that success that I know is very deep deep inside of me a lot of people believe in me and a lot of people have watched me evolve through my downfalls sometimes when I don't have that fire underneath me to say I can get it I believe in myself or I just need a little bit extra push my support system comes in and, and I can always call or sometimes people just know <laughs> and it's like you get one of those phone calls or a message hey Jared I've been thinking about you hope all is doing well um, I think I have a, a, a vast group of people who, you know support me genuinely and want me to win um, and that helps motivate me as well being in the position that I've been in and being able to travel and meet different people I see myself as a an example for other people to be able to do things like me and I, I see that other people are looking up to me and I can be a huge impact um, to kids lives I can be an impact to you know grown adults and really change uh, a lot of people's circumstances and people can kind of you know be inspired by me and I also think that I can help improve other people's lives and livelihood by honestly running track and field I guess as an athlete my biggest mental struggle and it's and it's interesting to hear a lot of these quotes when they say your biggest fear is not that you're inadequate your biggest fear is that you're you know successful or whatever beyond measure and I think in athletics a lot of times we or me personally think that My, I guess my biggest one of my, my fears is that like I'll reach my athletic potential and I don't think anybody really wants to reach their athletic potential or to you know reach that end and say like this is all that I have because I think a lot of us continue to be motivated by saying, I still got more in the tank Tom Brady right he's old he's already successful and, and he's got X amount of championship rings but he's like I still got something more and I think what what I fear is that like I guess there's also complacency to believe that I've reached my peak and there's nothing else beyond that and it's 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 scary because it's 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 the end it's like that's when you shouldn't be running track anymore if you hit that realization and in a sense it may not feel like it but it, it feels like it's giving up on the outside it may not seem like that but it's like I've given up inside right there's no more hope there's no more aspirations that I want to achieve within myself and then you just you, you, you turn around and I think a lot of people reach that I've hit my limit you know I, I accept these circumstances and one of my fears is that that will that that pressure of ability that pressure of like how how much further can I push my body um, will start to set in and, and be solidified as concrete and I, I won't be able to remove that because once that happens then I'll be I'll be done as an athlete and I think that is applicable to multiple fields not even just athletics but just in life in general like once you believe you've reached the best you can do in a certain situation it's like you got to come to the hard truth about it and and you've already lost to keep going after that. <laughs> um, yeah. Growth. That's all. Just growth. People want to continue to grow in something. Right. Yeah. You, you got um, to go.